as I was saying, welcome to 1854 Presents. Um, I'm Zoe Harrison, delighted to have you all here today. Um, for those of you that haven't watched it before, I'm a creative producer here at 1854 Media, and I'm delighted today to introduce our guests, which is the wonderful Martin Osborne, Jenny Lewis, and Orlando Gilly. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hi, Zoe. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, Martin is a photographer and publisher based in East London. Um, he co-founded and runs Hoxton Mini Press with his partner, Anne. For the past two years, they have published Portrait of Humanity, and for the past three, they've been the publishers of Portrait of Britain. And the third volume, I believe, is available for purchase from today, which is very it exciting. Is. Um, so, and he's currently, according to your website, um, um, this year, you're spent. You're seeing how many animals you can save in 365 days. Is that and correct? That was. Uh, I'm really sorry. That was six years ago. Oh, I do <laughs> apologize. <laughs> well, six years ago. I haven't updated my website for six years because I started publishing and it has destroyed my. <laughs> anyway. Well, I hope six years ago there were lots of animals saved. I did actually. Yeah, I saved about uh, 320 animals. Oh, fabulous! Yeah. Um, yeah, and for those of you who don't know Jenny, um, Jenny began creating her own work um, 10 years ago and has gone on to create uh, incredibly intimate portraiture, which has earned her many ex exhibitions internationally, including uh, 209 women in the Open Eye Gallery, Portrait of, of Britain and Open Walls Oral in 2020. She has published several photo books with Hoxton Mini Press, including One Day Young and Hackney Studios. And Orlando um, is a London-based British social documentary and portrait photographer. His work is known for his bold, uncomplicated visual approach with an emphasis on complementary hues and a strong colour palette. Um, like Jenny, his work has also been selected in the past for Portrait of Britain and has worked with a plethora of clients from BAFTA to Volkswagen. So, wonderful to have you all here today. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Moose. Um, this is Moose the dog. And Moose, do you want to give a little bio for, for Moose? Well, Moose... Um... He is 13 and uh, I, 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 I had Moose and then I met my now wife and co-founder of Hoxmi Press whilst walking Moose and then she got a dog uh, who's, who's down here called Bug mm -hmm. and uh, they are the, they are the Hoxmi Press dogs. <laughs> <laughs> they have absolutely no but, interest in photography. A very... But Moose, ha Moose has... Um... His own book, doesn't he? He does have his own book. Does he? Sold out, it's a brilliant book. I, I bought the book before I knew Martin. Oh, did you? It's really? a great book. <laughs> yeah, it's a great book. Everyone should have one. Well, it's now sold out, so... Um, wow. So uh, before we get into um, just our little chat, um, for those of you who are watching, you're probably used to this by now. We're going to have a Q&A at the end. Um, I have my screen here. So if you have any questions, um, send them in and we'll go through as many as we can at the end. If not, just let us know where you're watching from. We like to, we like to say hello. We love seeing where everyone is, is watching from. Um, also, an important thing to note is that um, Martin, Jenny and Orlando have chosen uh, to donate to the Hackney Food Bank. Um, so you'll see um, below the screen that you're watching on, there is a little donate button. So if you click on that, you'll be able, it'll take you directly to the donate page on that. Um, to keep up with upcoming events, awards and commissions, um, you can subscribe to our newsletter in the box below. And if you miss a live stream, as always, with all our other talks, um, you'll be able to see it in our archive. Um, so hello everyone, how are we all doing? Are we all good? Yeah, good. Cool. Good, yeah. So, you know, we're talking about photo books today, specifically, um, you all have, published your own photo books or you've published um, with Martin. Um, so for those of you who aren't aware of your work, this is quite a big question. So it's hard to summarize your work in like a very few, short period of time, but can you each tell us a little bit about your practice? Do you want to go Will for I jump it? in? Yeah, yeah you you can, jump yeah. in. I'll jump in. Um, I, I was a editorial portrait photographer for uh, years and years before I did my first book with Martin um, and that was always taking portraits for other clients so not really taking my my own work um, and then when I did One Day Young and and it became a book with Martin that was the first time I started doing portraits for myself which is actually a completely different thing and now it's something I'm obsessed with so that that's what I kind of do most of the time now because it's it's yeah really enjoyable to have have something that you're really passionate about and you can actually get that message across with portraiture so that's mm. what I do now mm. um, thank you Martin <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think um, I mean I'm terrible at answering these kind of questions but 
uh, it's always people focused, the stuff I've done, whether it's portraiture or, or documentary series. And um, for me, it's all, all about celebration of, of people or of culture and um, kind of highlighting what brings us together. And um, yeah, and I think the serious side of documentary photography, uh, you know, war photography and that kind of stuff is really important too, but it's also important to highlight the uh, positive as well. And uh, yeah, so I guess that's best I could put it. Mm, focus on joy. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Martin. Well, <clears throat> um, as I said, I haven't really properly taken a picture for years now because um, uh, I'm quite sure why. I mean, it, it's sort of because of the busyness, but also because it's like quite hard to do personal photography, actually. Um, so uh, I, I think I, I think my 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 main interest was uh, animals, particularly. Uh, our relationship to animals, um, which is a really screwed up relationship. Um, and I was sort of getting going into that as a theme um, and done a few books about uh, dogs, um, but they're not sort of uh, happy, clappy pictures of dogs. They're sort of um, uh, pictures about, uh, well, some of them about rescue dogs and about sort of the way that we mistreat animals, but <clears throat> um so that's uh and then that relates to me doing the saving animals work um and uh, that's it really yeah mm, fab so question for martin specifically now so what made you want to start up hoxton mini press well <laughs> um the uh it was uh we started it seven seven years ago now um at a time when everyone was basically saying you know print is dead um uh, it's all going to be everyone was talking about ebooks and <clears throat> an ebook hasn't and and, and uh it sort of never quite makes sense to me it's sort of like a book is not is not electronic it's that's the whole point a book is a physical object um and it was uh, at a time when I'd just been doing a project um, about um, photographing an old man that I'd seen outside my window. And, um, and, uh, and my now wife had just left her job and we were looking for a new project together. And so we did a Kickstarter campaign and it was a very organic thing. It was like, let's just start something to publish this book. But I think it came from a deep love of, um, that I think most photographers have, which is, uh, seeing seeing good photography um, it printed in a mm. book. Uh, I always think of um, books as being the the best and final resting place of a of a photography project. Mm -hmm. uh, online, they they they're actually there forever, I suppose, in the in the um, cyberspace. But they're not really in the same way they are in books somehow. Um, mm. One of my questions actually I was going to ask you this, but later on was. You know, the fact that we are, especially, I think, at the moment with COVID, um, living in a very much digital age. And yet, I feel like the demand for printed, physical, tactile photo books seems to be going up. I could be incorrect, but as far as I'm aware. I wish they true. <laughs> well, certainly in the past, I would say, decade, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely become, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, it's just that the, the COVID thing has been pretty harsh for mm. for um, the high street, which is still uh, a major. I mean, it's becoming less now. People are buying more online, which is fantastic. Mm. Um, but um, but it's um, but yes, it's been a, it's, I, I, it's not been great. Um, but yeah, I suppose you're right. There has been a sort of real uh, understanding that as books are no longer just for information, they're actually they're actually something to, uh, to celebrate as an object. Mm -hmm. You don't buy a book just to find out facts and, you know, or information you find out. You, you, you want a book to earn its place on your bookshelf. Mm. Um, and therefore, it has to be beautiful, unashamedly so. Yeah, that's, I've actually, uh, that's a good thing. I have actually just moved into um, a new house and I'm very delighted because I have nothing to decorate it at the minute, but I have about 10 Hoxton mini press books, which are now sat across the house and it looks stunning. So thank you very much. <laughs> um, that actually um, 
comes on to another question I had, which was kind of for all of you, because, you know, all of you create work and you have a, an idea in your head of how you want your, your work to be kind of consumed by the viewer. How, so how important is it um, that people are tactile with your work as opposed to them seeing it like on a wall in a gallery or online, as you were saying, in an e-book? You know, do you think that photo books should be or would you rather like books to be seen as, you know, maybe it can be both, but like a precious item or the, do you like the idea of people kind of living with it and kind of it being a part of their lives that they can kind of pick up and put down and have next to their coffee and... Um, I think books um, are the best, the best way to see photography. And I think you can, uh, you can, you can create a narrative. You can, um, you can look at it in an intimate way. You can share it around. It's, um, it's more affordable than buying a print. It's, it's, um, I, I just think it's the best. And, and I think particularly if we're talking documentary photography, a lot of images are not probably worthy of being printed and framed in my opinion some are but maybe from a big body of work a few would but an exhibition sometimes i don't know i just feel like it's particularly if we're talking documentary photography i feel it fits that medium so well and mm. i think it's the best yeah i was gonna say um have it, having a physical book in someone's home is it is a real privilege i mean i'm quite fussy about i don't want loads of books and never pick them up if I if I get a photography book I love it and I mm. look at it and I look at it with people so I'm always like you know really 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 pleased when someone's bothered to get one of mine mm. um but when I when I've spoken to people who've realized that I've done that book or like one of my books um a woman came up to me and she she knew, knew I did one day young and she said that book was on my bedside table for a year when I had my baby and she said I can't tell you how many times I picked it up and it just gave me strength and I felt supported and it's like oh my god I've been invited into her bedroom and I was there helping her or the mm. pictures were there or all the women in that book were there helping her and it's because of that book you know you wouldn't get that from flicking through a website or going to an exhibition that would be a very different experience but having that personal object in your home um becomes part of her um part of her own environment that she's created, um, that she wants it there. Um, and another woman I photographed once, um, had seen one of my books. I think she's seen Hackney Studios. And then she um, she wanted One Day Young and she went through it with her 15 year old son. Oh, Studios. <laughs> she went through it with her son and she said all the teenagers came into her office and really slowly they looked through every page, all these mm. teenage boys, and they were commenting on the different babies, the different uh, backgrounds, the different houses. And, and she was like, I would have never had that hour with those five teenage boys talking about motherhood mm. and babies and new life. And she said that book held their attention for so long. She was so surprised. But again, it gave, it started a conversation. So mm. that wouldn't happen from a website. That wouldn't, yeah. she would have never dragged them to an exhibition. But because it was in her home and they just gradually got drawn in, that's what mm. the book did. You know, because yeah. it's, it's putting it in that format and that that type of platform becomes really personal. People have to get close to you. It's, you know, they're small little books. If you want to look at it with someone, you're you're in an intimate space and you're talking about it and you're, you know, sharing it and handing it over. It doesn't matter if it's a bit dogged and there's a coffee cup on top of it. You know, mm. it's not it's not a really special, perfect print that needs to be behind a frame. Stand back, don't knock it. It's it's part of your home, so it should be a bit you know dogged <laughs> <laughs> Orlando actually that was a, a good point have, do you know if um have you shown any of the subjects from your book um the physical the physical the book oh uh, well you're showing me up now I I, <laughs> I, don't, I can't think off off hand I've um I've met I've actually photographed someone in one of the scenes for a separate project I'm working on um but I uh, yeah, no, I, I'm actually trying to track down the main guy on the front cover, who's mm. hopefully still alive, but um, uh, yeah, I, I, I think what, what Jenny described is, is the magic that you can get, and I, um, I haven't got those, as many of those stories yet, but um, I think that is what's, what's brilliant about it. Um, 
yeah. but it, it will be going on whether you know about it or not. I mean, that's just yeah. chance yeah. encounters. But that's, that's um, the thing with a book. It, like any book, um, I guess this doesn't just go for photo books. It does go on a journey. It could be passed mm -hmm. down. It could be given to someone. It could uh, someone could die in their, their, in their contents. Of the house might go to the members of their family. It goes on. A, it's it's like sending something out on a, like a message in a bottle. It just goes, and you don't know where it'll end up. And I think that is. That's a power of books, full stop, whether they're yeah. or not, um, which I think is brilliant. Yeah. yeah. What was quite exciting with um, Hoxton Mini Press, I think it was last year, is a couple of the books, One Day Young being one of them, was translated into Korean, which we, no you way. know, never, <laughs> ne I've got it on the shelf somewhere, would never have expected. Um, but then that, that photo project, which I, I'd never did for a book, I, did, I, I just did because I wanted to do, became a book in England and then it was translated and it's in Korea. I mean, it's, and then it's in a woman's bedroom in Korea. You know, mm. it's just, what are the conversations going on with that? You know, it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. You, you create this thing and you package it up as best as you can and you try and get the message that you want into it and your edit and your words and your cover and then you just have to like, let it go mm. and see what happens. But it, it's fascinating. How does that feel after you kind of, done all the work for it and you've shot all these images and obviously you've worked really hard on processing them and you've kind of worked on the ordering of them and then you just put it out into the world is that quite a frightening thing for you or how does, yeah, what does that because look? You've, I mean it's not quick you know <laughs> one day one day young took five years to shoot it was 150 women Hatton mm -hmm. Studios took five years to shoot and that was about 150 creatives I'm working on another project with Martin that's already been three years it's so much work and you love it and you've given it so much and then you've just got to let go and you don't know if it's ever going to have an audience. You know, even Martin with all his wisdom still never knows. You don't mm. know if that project is going to relate to people, if it's going to touch people. You hope it will because it, it means so much to you. So why wouldn't it? But you just, you don't know. Yeah. So it, it, is quite, it is quite frightening. You've put so much of yourself into your own book mm. and then you've just got to see what happens and it might be completely rejected, yeah. which would be <laughs> awful. Not great. <laughs> Um, do yeah. just out of out of curiosity, I'm not sure this is obviously another tricky question that I'm not sure I could answer, but do you have like a favourite photo book or is there a photo book that kind of stands out to you that you're you that. Oh, well, Korean there it writing? It's weird, isn't it? We we, we then... do, we've sold a number of books to Korea and they they're actually like quite strange choices and not not the sense that um that, that yours is a strange choice, Jenny, but it's like we've sold uh East London Swimmers, uh which is about a Lido in 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 London fields um she's just you know I, it's just quite strange that they chose that and then uh an illustrated book called 50 people of East London mm. uh, they wanted um and then we had interest for the East London food book that we've done in Spain and it was just like yeah. <laughs> it's really weird <laughs> um but Korea interestingly is, is a sort of hub of like well South Korea um uh, Seoul particularly is a hub of sort of um i think photography and photography books and mm. art design and stuff like that so uh i don't i don't i've never been but i wonder if there's a sort of if british photography books might have a certain standing who knows mm -hmm. but um, but we have a lot of interest uh, to, sorry to, to, i don't i don't to answer your question of favorite book i don't have a favorite book one of my favorites of recent times is this book which mm. is by the award by Gideon Mendel. I don't know if you guys know this book, but I think in some ways it's the perfect photo book because it's um, a beautiful story of an AIDS ward in London in the eighties. And it's just, it just is so well suited to the format of a photo book. It's got beautiful um, end papers and the sequencing is brilliant. And it's, it's just, I just think it's, it's, it's sort of perfection. I don't know if it's my favorite ever book, but I think yeah. that it's really powerful. And I did some work in the uh, AIDS charity recently and everyone knows about this book in that world. Oh, so really? It really has um, cut through. And I think the photographer ended up marrying one of the nurses that were in these AIDS books. Um, all, that always makes it a little bit nicer, doesn't it? Yeah, so there's so many stories, but you know, it's, some of them are heartbreaking pictures because they're, you know, terminal cases at a time where um, uh, something was stigmatized. So it's a sort of double, but anyway, that I think is brilliant. Mm -hmm. my, my favorite book is, um, I can't, I'm just looking for it. I can't find it. And it's the reason actually, I think that uh, I got into publishing 
and it's a book about cats in New York. <laughs> and actually, I, I recently got a print from a. This is the cover picture. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just dropped a picture onto my dog oh no a picture of a cat as well the insult you're right I should be saving them um, that's Ernie that's brilliant and he is a New York cat that um <laughs> Is everyone okay? Let me just check on the dogs. Um, so while Martin's doing that, this is... Um, hang on, hang on, I haven't finished. This is, oh, sorry, you're <laughs> still going. So Ernie is a, uh, a New York... Um, he's a New York uh, cat that hadn't left his... He never left his um, apartment. And um, basically it was a, a photo, a really beautiful photo book. But what was inspiring about it was that it was less than, I think it was like nine pounds to buy. And this was probably uh, 20 years ago. Uh, it was nine pounds to buy and it was um, in cloth. And it was a story about a cat and a photographer and their relationship. But it was beautiful photography, but it didn't take itself seriously. And it was this uh, fascinating combination of of high quality and sort of uh, mainstream appeal. And um, and that's been the ethos of Fox Mini Press actually, which has been sort of, we don't sneer at the mainstream, if you know what I mean. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like, sometimes there's a feeling in the art world that it's sort of for the art world. And, um, and that, you know, the books have to be quite obscure and then somehow mm. and it's like actually if lots of people want to buy them then um then then that's somehow not right but you know frankly if we sold our books at waitrose that would be a success you know it, it should be the books if they're really really beautiful and really meaningful then they should really appeal to quite a lot of people so um uh, not necessarily but anyway so that was that was the book that inspired inspired hot mm. oh. jenny um, you got to show us a book yeah, well, I, I I couldn't really decide, so I'm going to show you three, but I'm not even going to talk about them. I just did okay. really quickly. I love so that this book. Is, this I bought this week. I've been trying not to buy it because I haven't <laughs> been working very much in lockdown, but I couldn't resist, and I kept putting it. Yeah, and I was like, right, I have to have it, and it's absolutely beautiful. The quality of the printing in this book, George Giorgio, it's amazing. But I'm, I won't go on about it. You can look it up. Yeah. Can see a picture. His other book. Um, uh, I forget what it's called, the view, a view from the, the bus. It's all, um, it's all, it's all parades. It's all oh, parades yes, in America. Yes, it's brilliant. It, really. the, paper, the paper is so thick. Every piece of page, every page is like you could, you could frame it and put it on the wall. It's oh. so beautiful. So that, if you've, if you've got the cash, I would treat yourself to that. Mm -hmm. um, this was probably the first photography book I ever bought when I was doing a painting degree, Raise yeah. a Laugh. <laughs> and it's kind of, such brutal uh, honesty about family it 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 was the first thing that got me intrigued into photography and I, I am very interested in that honesty within photography and and documentation so that's a, an amazing one and this is another favorite it's called um imperial court by dana Luxemburg. i think i saw this and exhibition it, it was on at the photographer gallery a couple of years ago mm. and the the prints, oh my god, they're just yes. absolutely oh, yes. stunning. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and what, why I wanted to bring this one up today, I mean, I look at this a, a lot, but why I wanted to talk about this one was because everything that I do is about community. And this project that Dana did was took 23 years of her visiting this community. And I think that sort of repetition of photographing the same community and becoming an insider in that community is really important to me. That's the way I want to work. And that's like, she has done such a beautiful that, job. That book is probably the most beautifully printed book uh, I've ever again. seen. Mm. I, I even yeah. met with the guy who did all the color work. It's on that. Absolutely got stunning. got from him and it was like a million pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's, 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 it's George Giorgio's other book. book. Oh, 
the bus that's the bus ride the one, bus isn't stop it? the last stop it's amazing oh, yeah. Yeah. I, did get that one too. I got two more wait i got two more so they actually <laughs> go really well together i bought them at the same time i think from mac books these mm. are the two books both very different um this is by this um photographer artist jeff Mer mermelstein and they're basically all shots of new york mobile phones and they are not necessarily visually the most beautiful, but they are laugh out loud funny. And also they're anonymous. So it's, it's a really brilliant idea. And I think it's such an interesting look into how we communicate and also New York and language. And it's, I think it's brilliant. And it's pretty rare you laugh out loud reading any kind of book. And this is uh, Paul Graham and very different kind of book so intimate and gentle and beautiful and they're just shots of his mother in in the chair that she sits in her retirement home and it's just um brilliant and to me they're both really great uses of photo books different story diff completely different things and but but only really would work as photo books so this is one for example and um yeah i think they're yeah brilliant mm. Yeah, um, just sure. while Martin's away, Imperial Course, I saw it in Belfast Exposed, I remember, and I was walking around. It's quite a small exhibition space. I know we're talking about photo books, but just very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. I walked around that ex small exhibition space for about an hour, just mm -hmm. staring at it. Mm -hmm. It was just so beautiful. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's stunning, it's stunning yeah, work. And that, it, it's, it's the kind of work that it works beautifully as an exhibition. And, we, you know, whoever saw it was really lucky to see it but it works beautifully as a book mm. because there's so much work there and yeah. you have to keep digging back in and back in and back in and understanding it's all the also, family relationships. I mean, it, it's if you get, a, is it five, four, eight, ten? that's Sean? If you get a good five, four, eight, five, four, ten, it's all five, four, four that's printed well, mm. um, then it's, it's just uh, out. I mean, every page is just like, bang. It's amazing. I think that was, an, I think another thing that's great about, photo books is I think in the exhibition obviously you couldn't have every single image in no. that book in mm. like in the gallery space but with yeah. that with the book obviously you can see so much more which is what I was left kind of yeah. wanting to see all of the images. Yeah, um, yeah I would nearly say that is a rare exception of maybe the exhibition being stronger than I haven't seen the book but because it's shot in such a an amazing camera and it's just got that real beauty mm. on imperial course yeah yeah but if you see the book you're you're yeah but if yeah. you see the book you what, 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 what you've got is like 200 pages that you it's get weird it's, it's paperback and it's that no, quality it's, sort of, it's, it's amazing yeah but, you know i could i couldn't afford a print but I <laughs> yeah but I'm, I'm really glad i went for it that's a mm. good one yeah um so back to about um your process and how you all work this is kind of a question for all of you um so how do you even begin putting together your own photo books you know what is the process kind of from having all the images to then having it you know in a beautifully bound book you know how do you order them how do you decide how do you build a narrative with the ordering of your images there's a clue with you jenny behind you is there not yeah, Jenny, talk about that. There's, there's one in progress. <laughs> um, I can talk about that if you want. Shall I talk about that? Um, so this is a new book that I'm doing, new series I'm doing with Martin. Um, it needs to be finished in about three weeks, I think, the shooting. Um, so, I mean, this, this is a very specific book because this is called uh, 100 Years. So it's every age from one to 100 in Hackney. So as I've shot someone of that age, the picture goes on the wall and the post-it note comes off, but the post-it notes are the ages I've got left. Some of the post-it notes are people's names and I've shot them and the picture's not there yet. So this one's very chronological because it has mm. to be that. So then as I'm shooting, I can see, have I got the diversity of um, ethnicity or economic stories or backgrounds, outside, inside, close up, pull back. You know, I can see it as I'm building it because I know the order of the book already because mm. it has to be one to a hundred. So that's been very sort of um, a different way of working. Mm. When, I, when I was one day young, I didn't shoot it to be a book. I just mm. shot it obsessively. Yeah. Mm. So by the time I showed Martin that book, I'd already done 50, 80, I don't know. I ended up shooting 150. So I wasn't shooting for a book, but it became um, 
because it was the same moment in people's lives, they worked continuously because it was a woman the day she had a baby back in her own home. And quite quickly, it, it seemed that it worked better if it was quite close up, not full length, not in, not out, not all over the place so that you could just see the project and almost be the same distance uh, and the eye line was almost the same as you go through the project. But that wasn't really planned. It's just what worked. Mm. Um, and with Hackney Studios, again, I didn't shoot that to be a book. I was just shooting it. And each artist suggested the next. But with that one, the subject matter of the studio was as important as the, por as the person in it. So it had to be landscape. And um, you had to sort of be able to work out what they did from all the clues in the background. Yeah. So I was just, I, I was just shooting it and they'd suggest the next person. So I had no... Um, control over who I was shooting yeah and then Martin and I edited it down from 150 to the mm. 50 pictures in the book Is it question. can I ask a bit before you decide that it's going to be a book did you was it hard explaining to some of the people um what your you know the, why I was doing it yeah why yeah why uh I suppose uh I thought it would be a feature, a feature in, I, I worked for Weekend Magazines. I, I, when I explained what I was doing, I said that um, I, I'm a photographer, I work for magazines, you know, yeah. it would be a, a feature for the, I'd try and get a feature in The Guardian or it'd be um, an online project on my website. Yeah. There was no mention of a book. Yeah. I'd never done a book. I didn't know it was a possibility. It, it seemed way beyond and far too glamorous and artistic. <laughs> um, you know, uh, so yeah, I couldn't believe it was a, a thing uh really it wasn't it wasn't even a thought in my mind um, um do you mind if i just show so the cover of this book while you're talking about it so i'm sure yeah, people will recognize yeah, so, it so um, this is that's it. hackney studios that's it. yeah no. um but yeah and then martin and i edited that down together um so the you know the the 40 pictures in one day young that worked or the 50 in hackney studios that worked and, you know, Martin's really good. It's nice to do something in collaboration. When, you, when I've worked on these projects, it's for a long time and on my own. So to be in a team with a publisher and just have someone else's eyes on the project has just been really helpful to, like, help choose the cover, help, under, you know, how many pages will work, when then will people get bored, you know, the size of the book, the price of the book. It's been really, really, really nice to have someone like hold my hand through that process. I think mm. I'd have been too scared to do it on my own. I think that's, it's, that's uh, what you can't do with editorial stories is you don't have that um, collaboration, really. I mean, maybe with some picture editors, but um, you, you <coughs> have the and they put it together and it's such a, it's, it's really fun, but also it's quite important how, in, what images are paired with what images and, that kind of stuff so it's, it's a it's a great opportunity to to be able to do that i think mm. Mm. martin how do how did because you've obviously you created your own book um how have you find uh, kind of working alongside other artists kind of helping them kind of um create the narrative in their books as opposed to doing it with with your own less stressful it, i was a nightmare uh. i'll say that before he starts <laughs> i was a nightmare because it was all new I to me I was very precious. I think I was probably better the second time, but the third time, yeah, I could no, she's amazing. not letting me speak right now. You see, <laughs> <laughs> which is exactly what it's like. Um, uh, uh, um, it's a it's a lesson in human psychology as much as photography. Actually, it's fascinating. I don't think any photographer we work with has been the same. Um, you know, because a photography book comes from someone's sort of inner soul, so when you're working with it, you're sort of working with them really. Mm. And, it, um, you know, you're sort of having to, uh, to sort of, and I always think actually, if there's a bit of argy-bargy on the way, it's actually probably better. Mm. You know, I think, I think, I don't think that any, any, um, I think if a photo book is, is easy, it's failed really. Mm. It has to be a, it has to be like, you know, it's, it's like giving birth. <laughs> Like, like I've done a few times um, <laughs> but it's sort of like you know it's, it's it's that process of like it's not it's not it's, you know nature didn't intend for it to um, you know come out easily so it's um, you know we, I mean now, me and Jenny had a had a lot of you know tussles about the, about like one day young I mean basically we wanted to put words in it and Jenny was like you know we would have stories in it and Jenny was just like 
no and i'm because it's really and most photographers you know and being a photographer i sort of get it but they come with a view that that it's about their photography mm. Which it, which it is, and it's their book, but it's also not in a sense, because it's a book and it's different from, from a photography project. You know, when people consume a book, um, the reality is it's as much about giving and owning, collecting, sharing, showing, as it is about just looking at the photograph. So the experience of, you know, I, I'm always like, I don't understand why printers don't make books smell better because I think it's such a, uh, you know, I mean, we're looking at doing a scratch and sniff. Um, oh, amazing. Some, uh, the, the, the smell of hackney, I think we're going to... No, ha ha <laughs> hackney smells. Oh, I'm not sure. Um, and it was, you know, but it was um, oh. about, um, you know, so... And the, the photographers, you know, a, a lot of photographers come with a view that, that I did when I wanted to publish, which is like, basically, I'd like this book to be this big and I'd like it to be on... Um, 300 gsm uh organic japanese um handcrafted paper <laughs> um do you know what i mean and it's like mm. actually that's not what it's about you know it's about getting people to see it to enjoy it to consume it to keep it to love it to share yeah. it yeah um so you have to sort of like persuade the photographer um to sort of go beyond their own and also you know a photographer is so so close to it that they're sometimes a terrible judge of what's working, you know. And the classic thing is a photographer who comes and says, you know, I've got to put this image in the book because I took it the day before my father died. And I'm like, you have to say, people don't know or care about that, frankly, because it's not in the photograph, you know. Mm. And you have to stand back and judge it as a consumer does and all of all of publishing is about understanding things from the point of view of the person who picks up the book mm. um and people and photographers are often terrible at that but the photographers that are best to work with for us are the ones uh, i really like it you know strong strong characters who have strong opinions um but they need to be able to take strong opinions back and uh, i really like um people who are open to collaboration. I really like working with Jenny. I mean, I like the fact that we have disagreements, you know, but I can tell her to her face and Jenny tells her to mine. Um, and, um, you know, and I like, I like, I like, you know, and, and a photographer who's, who's sort of immovable in their vision of the book is just like, you know, mm. just, you know, just piss off basically because it's not the way we work. You know, it is a collaboration. It is it is about us making it work for us as well as for you. And it's and and it's and things are so much better when they're greater than the sum of their parts. And when you work together to create something new and and, and special and beautiful. So I don't know if that answers the question. I think it does. Mm. I think I'm just having a look at the time. And um, Martin, I'm aware that you need to. I have to put my daughter to to bed, but I just got a text from my wife say that she's in front of the TV. So that means I've got a bit more time to watch. Okay. Before. Well we'll do we'll we'll do two more questions then you can you can uh I mean, you can carry on with these two, right? Yeah of course you can. But yeah. I think we're we're coming up to the forty five minute mark. So I think people Oh I are... see is that when everyone goes to bed. Why well, we just say it's forty we say we say it's forty five minutes. I don't know if you're watching, let us know. Uh <laughs> carry on. But... I mean in this virtual world. It's, um, it's only us four anyway. So it's yeah, it's only us four. I mean, yeah, I, I, I should know if everyone's gone already. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like we're having a chat in, in the end, a public space. So there's just people myself. earwigging around the around next to us. But we'll do two more questions and then we'll let everyone. Oh, I'm just there we go. So quite a tricky one. Um, so what do you think makes, you know, you've shown us photo books that you really feel very strongly about. What is it that you think makes a really good photo book or a great photo book? If you, if you will. <laughs> Go for it, Ollie. Oh. <laughs> um, oh. Um, I quite like specific stories that, uh, I, I, I don't know, it's hard. Mm. Or what do you, what do you kind of see? Because I know there's a couple of things whenever I'm looking at photo books that I just kind of 
my body does something that I can't really explain. But I just go, uh, it's kind of like, you know, whenever you see like a small dog and your body does something that you can't really explain why it's doing it. I kind of get that with certain things. Oh, sorry, hang on, you see a small dog. You know, you know, whenever you see a small dog or something really cute and fluffy and your body just kind of, your voice turns into like- I'm scared of small dogs, so. Oh, well, your, your body probably does something different to what mine does, but I get very excited. Um, so when it tap, when something taps into the, the, like, the lizard brain, right? Yeah, it exactly. It goes past the intellect, it goes <laughs> down to that primordial bit. You yeah. Know, and you just go, ugh, and yeah. I want to have it, well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stroke it. I yeah. Don't just, if I see a book, I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> Sniffing the paper, rubbing it on my face. Yeah, exactly. As well, we all do. A photo editor once described some pictures as being yummy, and I think mm. maybe that applies. It's just, not, it's just a, there's a niceness to it. Mm. But I, don't know, I, I, I don't know what it like. Like with Imperial Court, I probably went to that exhibition six or seven times, mm. and I was like, no, I don't need the book. It's just a beautiful experience. I just can't come again, and I just couldn't stop thinking about the bloody book. Yeah. It was like in my blood. It was like I had to have it, mm. and that sometimes happens. Not that often, I have to say, but when it happens, you know that the pictures mean so much to you. They're ingrained on your brain. You want to look at them again and again and again and again, and you want to read the text you haven't had time to, and you want to show other people, and you want to share it, and you would just want it there mm. so that your kids will absorb it and your friends will absorb it. And I mm. think that you know, it's just a physical. I don't, I don't know. I don't always just want, I don't want a book to just sit there and be pretty. No. I, it has to, it has to be, right, I need this as part of my visual library. Yeah. And I think um, it's like you've gained new words from, from, from that project. There's, there's certain ways that she'll, um, she never sort of looks down on people. She often looks up at them. There's certain visual things that I haven't, I didn't realize I'd absorbed until I started taking photos at different angles. And I mm. realized that that book and pictures from that book have become my part of another word in my language. It's like you're constantly building things up. So I think when, when images mean so much to you, you know, you can't necessarily afford the print mm. and, and have it framed enough in your house, but you can afford the book maybe. Mm. So you can, you can take a piece of that artist, which is just amazing, isn't it? You know, you I can't think, buy a painting, but you can buy a postcard or a, mm, or a book about them. There's, there's something quite communal for something that, you know, people usually visualise kind of reading a book like you're very like this. But there's something I, I think very communal where, you, where you're kind of showing people and you're like, oh, look at this. And you're all sat around and you're looking at it and you're sharing it. Um, that I just think is great. Um, anyone else have any any responses to that question? What, remind me again with the question. Um, what do you think? Well, I said, what do you think makes a great photo book? But then it kind of turned into, is there anything in particular in particular photo books that make you do the lizard brain thing? Yeah, I think, I think, you know, design, um, you know, I mean, the material, you know, it's like, it's taken us ages to realise, like, for example, I always thought that this, the size of a book was was down to the kind of, the, the the footprint you know the, the cover size but it's this weird uh, alchemy between the cover size and the thickness of the spine and the thickness of the cover material that you can't you know and, and until I mean, we, we design you know books and it's like you can you know the size down to the millimeter you know the height but until it arrives you're like oh it's this big mm. it's this thing that a book somehow is not something that you can describe in uh, on a computer screen in two dimensions it's something you have to feel and, touch. and this is why i'm convinced that we need to do more smelly books because well, you know the smell of books is I, the smell of everyone the smell of books is amazing but, but yeah. no, no publisher actually no printer actually does work on that mm. i'm going to do a book with pictures of like you know beautiful food shots and then you actually smell them and they smell like you know rubbish bins or something <laughs> Yeah, it's sort of weird, you know, the interaction between visual and, and um, anyway, so it's, 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 it, it is this sort of lizard brain because, you know, lizards love, love books. They do, famously.
famous Lila Lizard's love books. Um, I think we'll just end. We've got a question here from a lovely lady called Bella. So hello, Bella. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, and she wanted to know, um, Jenny, you've kind of answered this already, but for, for, the other, for the other two. So do you start a project with the intention of it ending in a photo book? Um, so for, for Trivial Pursuits, the book that we did, I did with Martin and the rest of the people at Hooks Moon Press, it wasn't initially, it was kind of the same as, a little bit the same as Jenny was saying, it was, the idea was to get it published in an in a editor, editorial feature and it was kind of lined up for that actually. Um, and it just built, it was momentum built and then that's, it went down a different route and I'm very glad it did because it's just, you can, it's a, you can tell the story more completely and more concisely and it's, you, yeah. So in my case, not necessarily, mm -hmm. it always leads to it. Um, and Martin, for your, your book, the 86 and a half years, um, did that, was that always intended to be a photo book? No, not at all. Mm. Um, not at all. And I remember a, a moment when it was going to be an exhibition and um, talking to a designer friend of mine about whether we should um, do a catalogue uh, for the book. Or, I mean, not for, for the exhibition or whether it should be a book. And he said, there's no point doing a book because, you know, you don't have book, I mean, for small exhibitions. And we would do something really cool with folding out paper. And it was like, um, thank, you know, if I'd gone down that route, I don't think it would ever be uh be here today um, um and it was that moment and and actually then i decided to do it as a book and then basically literally just downloaded indesign and we i designed a book in in i think 24 hours and literally set the first the first edition sent it super simple 48 pages it's all i could afford at the time and sent it off to print and um and it was just this incredible feeling of receiving the book back in your hands um, and then I took it by hand to the local bookshop uh, Art Words in um, in Rivington Street and um, sold it there and then the idea that I came back like uh, two days later and they'd sold out it was like whoa <laughs> that was like lizardtastic yeah <laughs> wow how, how many um, copies did you do that first print run I think it was 750 did it with did it with push push print in London who are brilliant printers That's and just uh, brilliant and 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 it wow, was just, and I, I worked out I remember working out that I made a profit of something like five pounds uh, and then I divided that between over the six years that I worked and <laughs> hours I worked and worked out I made yeah. something like half a, a, a halfpenny for a <laughs> uh, was it hard convincing your um gentleman in the book to 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 get involved no no i mean he he, he didn't he, he didn't care about the book or the exhibition i mean he got people coming up to him in the end who recognized him going i mean just in shooting it though initially no he... no he would talk talk to anyone <laughs> and martin's being really um quiet about it but that book has been so successful i mean how many times have you reprinted it martin seven, seven times Eight times. Are you seven times? Well, no, maybe more, thousand eight. each time. It's a lot. Yeah. That's a little more. photo book that wasn't even going to be a book. Has got like thousands and thousands of no, it's not really. I mean, I I don't think it's really a, a photo book like yours, you know, it's not not I mean it's not it's well, nice. Well, whatever it's kind got, of put it. Well, no, no, it's, 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 it's got story it's, in it, it's got words in it. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's the bloody words. <laughs> but it, no, but what's brilliant to... is that people love it. it. People relate to it. It really works, and it really so works. I can't right. imagine that in a broadsheet because it, because it's kind of a gentle story and a slow burning mm. one. It doesn't quite fit in a. I couldn't imagine it in a one of the main files. And, and I was got... trying to make it a photographer, and I sent it off to loads of um, agencies, and basically didn't get a single response. Mm. Yeah, it's, like, too, it's too good for that. It's too good. No, no, but it's like, what was what, this way? And, what like, it? and I was doing it sort of in, you know, you know, I was doing it. Well, I think what, what's actually what I've found with doing these books, and maybe Martin with that book as well, is by doing a book, you don't have to rush like you would with an editorial feature. You know, that took six years. All my projects have taken five years. You spend a huge amount of time and as you do that the project and why you're doing it evolves and it becomes more meaningful it's not 
It's not to be put in a magazine and put in the bin. This, and it also this, this, um, this, this, this end point um, as well. And, you know, and let's face it, most of us photographers are, are insecure in, in many ways. And, and having that confirmation um, of a book uh, as, and it, it, it gives you a sort of like, you know, it is that sort of little physical light at the end of the tunnel, isn't it? Because it's like mm. so difficult when you're doing a personal project. Um, and, and when you've got, you got it, it, as a book, it's like you've crossed the line. Mm. Well, I suppose as long as the, as long as it sells, then you don't have them all under your bed. No, you probably <laughs> no, I, don't, I, mean, you know, I don't think so. Actually, really. Well, I mean, yes, no. I mean, we we you, you, you need the, fi the final bit is the audience. Unfortunately, you know, good good photography, uh, great photography doesn't doesn't mean um, good book sales, and good book mm. sales doesn't doesn't mean great photography. Mm. Um, so um, there, there isn't a co necessarily a correlation yeah. for the two, but as a publisher, we have to we have to manage the commercial reality of things, mm. and very few people really understand how difficult it is to make the numbers stack up in publishing, and that's why so many photography book publishers will ask their um, photographers for quite a lot of money. Like more than it costs to print the book because it's there. It's just that it's it's quite a you know, and it, and if you start if you sell, basically if you sell more than two thousand copies, three thousand copies, suddenly it's it's like it's like a COVID curve. Suddenly you get loads of well not deaths but book sales. <laughs> and, um, and but but before that before that it's like at that moment of lockdown mm -hmm. you've got basically if you sell less than three thousand two thousand copies you're in this sort of um, sort of slightly difficult commercial wasteland where to get the money and you've got to sell it for 50 quid, you know, which is mm. fine, you can do it. Or mm. if someone pays you 20 grand to have their book published. But it's mm. really, um, you know, it's really difficult to make those numbers work. So that's why we sort of have to look at that. But it's a really difficult balancing it. Mm. Mm. Well, I've had a look at the time and we've kept you for way too long thank you everyone for watching and for like martin jenny and orlando for joining us and um, if anyone wants to buy any of your books where can they where can they go oxton mini press well well oxton mini press.com mm -hmm. and uh, portrait of britain uh, the third edition is also on there so if anyone's it's, interested it's in that. Say, it's like, it should be up let me just check it's on the website <laughs> should, well might be up we'll see it should be on the home page. No. I think I saw it. I think I saw it earlier today. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to have a look at that as well, talk to and, and just and just just quickly, if anyone mm -hmm. anyone got some really strong uh, lot projects about lockdown in London, London only, um, send them send them through Talks Mini Press because we're Great. looking. Fantastic. Well, as I said, thank you. You three for joining Orlando. Thanks, thanks for having us. Oh, no Thank problem you. at all. Thank um, you, Zoe. I appreciate it. No problem at all. And as I said, um, there's a donation link below. So if you're in a position to do so, um, do have a do click on it and give what you can. Um, it'll be greatly appreciated. But other than that, um, have a lovely evening, everyone, and I'll see you um, same time next week. So <laughs> goodbye. Thanks, Zoe. Thanks a lot. <laughs>